So how can you introduce your network marketing business as a topic of conversation you know, to check if somebody's open or not without looking and feeling like a loser? I mean, the last thing we want to do is scare people away by becoming that guy or that girl. Oh my goodness, they're here again. They're going to like, they got the t-shirt, they got the smoothie, everything's branded. And you know, it's sometimes it's just clunky, isn't it? You're like, if you, even if you're on messenger, how's your cat? How's your big toe? Oh, you're washing your hair. Do you want to make money online? It's just, it's just awkward, square peg into round hole stuff. So how can we um, ease that so that when you introduce it, it's a natural progression. It doesn't make the person run a mile. If anything, it's more likely they're going to say yes. So here's the first thing, okay? We want to have a target market, okay? This solves a lot of the problems associated with this problem, okay? Why would that be? Well, for example, if I, my offer um, is I teach network marketers, right? I teach network marketers how to build their business the same way that I did and, and, and I've helped many other people do the same. So if I'm always creating content, products, I'm adding people and conversing with people and communicating with people who are network marketers, it's going to be way easier for me to speak their language and understand you know, how I can actually join in that conversation with my product or service, isn't it? Because if I didn't understand the audience, I don't really understand the lingo, the verbiage. I, I don't really understand the right and wrong way to do something. And also, if you don't have a target market, oh my goodness, why would you bring out that much work? Can you imagine having to learn a whole bunch of different types of personalities and demographics and how we can fit our business into every one of those conversations? You know, it's just a nightmare. But if I'm only conversing, which I am, with existing network marketers, I can speak your language straight away. Oh, you build a network marketing business. So how's the lead generation and recruiting going? What's your comp plan like? What level, what, what rank are you at in the company? What's your goal? So I use this terminology and straight away we're on the same wavelength. There's more trust there. I'm able to talk about that business because I understand it, I understand you, and I can join in that conversation as opposed to feeling like an imposter. It's like um, it's like when you get people who get a little bit like old dads, right, or old uncles. You know, they, they, they still, they're like 58 years old, they still think they're 15, and they're trying to like dress and act and hang around with like 19 year old girls. It just, it's weird, do you know what I mean? It's like, stop trying to talk like a 19 year old, Stop trying to join in the conversation. Just act like a 58-year-old and, and be appropriate. Do you know what I mean? It, it's, just, it's just even if their intentions are good, to come over and be like, hey, what's up, fellas? I mean, was like, what? Straight away, there's a resistance. And if that person introduced anything to that conversation, all of a sudden those people are saying, I don't want to know anything about this because you're just weird. It doesn't fit. Try and fit. And a way you can do that is by having a target market, a group of people who are similar to yourself, who you can relate to, who you want to work with, who you're going to focus your marketing around. Even way easier to converse with those people and not feel weird right off the get-go. Second thing we can do is we can also look at, uh, what is it, where someone is, where they are, their destination, and their solution, I'll write these down. So this is the basis of what we do really in network marketing in any business, to be honest. We say, where are you? Most people aren't happy where they are. I wish I had more time. I wish I had more money. I wish I had more skills. I wish I was more confident. I wish I didn't have to do a nine to five, whatever it may be. Well, where do you wanna be? Well, I wanna be able to work full time from home two or three hours a day and play with my kids and travel the world. I wanna have a Ferrari. I wanna have a bigger house. I wanna retire my husband or wife from their job. I want to give to my community. They have a destination. And what's the solution you've got for that that's concrete? Well, I don't have one. Okay, would you be open to a solution? Yes, I would. See, what we did there was, in all of this, we used their words, not ours. Their words. So even if I'm telling you the truth, if I tell you what to do and what not to do, how many times do the kids go against the parents simply because it's their parents and they ask them? Do you know what I mean? Go back to that weird 58 year old uncle, right? If you're like, hey, you know, you really should put a coat on because it's cold. I was watching Father of the Bride the other day 
you know, and, and he was like, hey, you should put a jacket on, you should put a jacket on. And she was like, no, 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 And then a new fiance was there. He was like, it's kind of chilly. She's like, oh, I'll put a jacket on. It's like when you get a weird, cool aunt or uncle, same thing. Make sure you do your schoolwork. Make sure you do your schoolwork. Yeah, whatever. And the uncle's like, hey, do your schoolwork. Yeah, I'll do it. You know what I mean? It, sometimes it's it's the the source and the way that we're doing things. We, they feel resistance. If you push, someone pushes back. I tell my daughter this all the time. I say, if someone pushes you, what's your natural reaction? I said, if you're going to push somebody, make sure you push them out of arm's length because that initial response goes away. Don't push them and leave them with an arm's length because they'll just push you back. And it's the same with your words. So if we get into a, whether we're on Messenger, whether we're using a video on a sales funnel or a presentation, whether we're on a phone call, it's irrelevant. If we're saying to people, you know what, think about how rude this sounds. Um, you know, I, I can see that you're out of shape. I know that's probably making you unhappy. Um, do you realize that you're at increased risk of cancer and diabetes and leaving your family younger? So, you know, we obviously need to get you on this supplement, right, and join my team. I mean, you're telling them the truth, and you may say they need a wake-up call. No, what they need is a solution, and if you're being a true marketer and a decent person, you should want to do what gives the best chance of them saying yes to you, from a business and a personal standpoint, and that isn't pushing them. It isn't pushing them at all, right? So we need to find a way of using their words, and we can do that with that simple process that I gave you. Where are they? Where do they want to be? Do they have a solution? Probably not. Well, would they like one? So now when you introduce the solution, i.e. your business, you're actually helping them. You're now a helper, not a salesperson. You're now a helper, not a, not a oh, just want to pitch me. Because if they just said, I'm on, let's flip that example around. I'm unhappy with my appearance. It's making me miserable. I can't play with my kids enough. I'm worried about certain more serious illnesses. Um, I'm not really on track with my diet. I don't really know how, how to deal with that kind of thing. I Yes, I wish there was something that could help me drop a few pounds and get me motivated. You say, well, I, I use a supplement that helped me drop some weight. It's helped a bunch of other people. I actually am, am a, a seller for that supplement. Would you like me to give you some info? Why would they then say no to that? Why would it then be like, oh, I, I can't believe it. You, sir, you, sir, the cheek of it introducing that. They're not going to say that, are they? Because they just told you all these things and said, yes, I want help. You said, here's some help. They're not going to go, why are you trying to help me? Do you see that? It just makes sense to do it that way. So that will help you, okay? If you want to get the business into the conversation, those tips will help you. Here's one more that you can take away with you. Be willing to walk away, okay? The person's over here. Don't be tempted to push, be willing to walk away. Okay, you say, okay, this person isn't ready yet. Isn't ready yet. Often, people are very resistant to any kind of help. That's just the way that they are. So we can, we can walk away from that person if we're doing focusing our efforts on lead generation. This is something I encourage you to do. If, if, you're, if you've got a lifeblood, of regular, pe of, of regular people, I don't know what their regularity is like, but I mean, if you've got a regular flow of people coming into your business saying, I want to know more, I want to take a look, show me more, you're not, you don't feel the need to do the stupid stuff that you might be doing right now, that we've all been through. You know, <laughs> oh, shoes, shoes, you know what else has got an S in it? Vitamins, buy my vitamins. You know, we don't want to do stupid stuff like that. So we don't feel the need to do that if we look in our diary and we say, I've got seven more people that want information today and seven more tomorrow, and 10 the day after that, and 20 the day after that. We're like, I'm, gonna, I'm getting through these people, they're serious people. I don't need to try and you know, take someone from a two to a nine level of interest. I've already got a bunch of people that are nines, I'll just focus on them. See what I mean? So if right now you're feeling the need to wedge in your business conversation into normal conversations, chances are you're not focusing enough of your efforts on lead generation, so there's only scraps at the table, and you're trying to crump them together and make them into a nice meal when it comes to leads. You see that? So let's look at your lead generation uh, as a great solution to being able to do this better. So have a target market. If you're surrounded by them, you're going to speak their language. Make sure you're using their words, having them tell you where they're struggling. So now you're a helper, not, not hitting on someone, right? And also be willing to walk away by generating more leads so that you feel more secure and say, you know what, I don't need this person. I don't need to push them or cajole them. If they're giving you the signals and they're not interested, it's like dating, right? You know, this is why these apps work so well these days. Because you're able to get through, I say get through, that sound right, did it? You're able to get through a lot of dates. You know, you're able to get to know people, have like a drink or something with a whole bunch of people without being having to commit to everybody because you can decide which one is for you, right? 
you can tell I don't date. <laughs> it's useless explaining that. I've been married, like I've been with my wife since I was 16 years old. We were boyfriend and girlfriend at 16. I'm 38 now. So 22 years and we didn't even date before that. We were friends first. So I have no idea about dating, but I would imagine in my practical brain, if I was single, not that I would ever want to be, but if I was single, I would go out there and I'd be like, okay, let me introduce myself to as many people as possible. And then the person that there was a spark with, then I'll want to take that further. It's the same thing when you're generating enough leads. Plenty of interest means you don't need to try and say, oh, well, this person, I don't really have a spark with them, but let me, let me try to see if I can force a spark and let me see if I can be more interesting. You don't need to do that, okay? So did that help? My explanation on dating, not so much. But was that training useful for you? I hope that it was. Um, if you liked it, then like this. Uh, if you uh, have a question, you want to know more, like, how do I do this, Richard? Stick me a comment underneath this video. And my social media links are in the text if you kind of scroll down, so I'm easy to reach if you have a message. I do take, as a standard of mine, 60 minutes a day out of my day to respond to messages. So give me a few days, but I will get back to you. If you want more training, well, Richard, what's my next step? How can I build a business? I like the way you train. Go to my website, richardmatharu.com. Plenty of stuff over there for you, plenty of resources, free training, right up to paid high-end products. So whatever level you're at, you can progress and get some results. As always, go create a day in a life that counts. Always have more desires than excuses. Can't believe I said get through a lot of people. You know, you know what I meant. You know what I meant, right? It's your mind that's in the gutter if you're thinking something else. I'll catch you on the next one. Hope you have a fantastic day and bye for now.